3.6 Inverse Functions The objectives of this section are simple. By the end of this video, you should be able to define inverse functions and relations. You should be able to find the inverse relations from tables, graphs, and equations, and determine whether an inverse is a function, and verify inverses using composition. Graphing an inverse relation Example 1. Here we have a graph in the red and a table that goes through the x and y coordinates of the graph. To find the inverse of the graph, all you do is simply switch the x and y coordinates and plot on the graph. The orange graph is the inverse of the red. The graph of the inverse f is a reflection of the graph of f across the line. In other words, the coordinates are flipped. Keep in mind that y equals x throughout the entire section. Finding an inverse from an equation. Example number two. Find g of x, which is the inverse of f of x, equals 2x plus 1. So what you want to do first is change the f of x to y to give it an x and y value. Next, switch the x and y in the problem so you get x equals 2y plus 1. This is important because you are finding the inverse of the function. Next, you just solve like you did in algebra so you have found the inverse. And you will end up with y equals x negative 1 half. Now, the inverse it should be f of x equals 1 half x minus 1 half. Example number 3. Find g of x, which is the inverse of f of x equals 2x to the 7th minus 1 to the 5th. This one's a little harder, but the same steps apply to this one just like the previous one. Change f of x to y, then switch the x and y. After you take the x and divide it by the 2, you're going to want to get rid of the 5th power. You move it to the other side and get the fifth root of x divided by 2 equals y to the seventh minus 1. Add 1 to the other side to get the fifth root of x divided by 2 plus 1 equals y to the seventh. To get rid of the seventh power, you have to seventh root the entire equation, which comes out to be the seventh root of the fifth root of x divided by 2 plus 1, which is the inverse of f of x. Example number four, find the inverse of f of x equals 4x squared minus 2x. The same steps apply, change f of x to y, then switch x and y and end up with x equals 4y squared minus 2y. Set this to zero to end up with zero equals 4y squared minus 2y minus x. Four then becomes your a, negative two becomes your b, and negative x becomes your c. Plug this into the quadratic equation to get y equals 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative x, all over 2 times 4. Simplifying this will get you to the inverse of f of x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 16x over 8. Then pull out the 4 and get 2 plus or minus to the square root of 1 plus 4x over 8. And all of this simplified will get you to 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4x all over 4. One to one functions. Function is considered one to one if its inverse is also a function. Use the horizontal line test to determine if the graph of the inverse will also be a function. The inverse of the function, it's notated f inverse. This doesn't mean f to the negative first power. Using the horizontal line test, example 5. Graph each function and determine whether it's a one-to-one -one function. Letter A is a one-to-one -one function because it passes the vertical and horizontal line test. Letter B is not one because it is elongated right here. And C is also a one-to-one -one function. Restricting the domain, example 6. Find an interval on which the function is 1 to 1 and find the inverse of f on that interval. f of x equals x squared minus 3. This problem is simple. Solve just like a normal equation and end up with the square root of x and just plot it on the graphs. And you will end up with the function is 1 to 1 from 0 to infinity. A 1 to 1 function and its inverse has these properties. Since they're the inverse, the f and the inverse of f are just switched. Any two functions having both properties are one-to-one -one and inverses of each other. That's just a good tip to have. Verify that f and g are inverses of each other. 
f of x equals 2x over 3 minus x, and g of x equals 3x over x plus 2. So basically, to find out if they're inverse of each other, all you have to do is plug in for both of them. So here you have f of x, and you're just going to plug in where the x is, the g of x equation, and all this work is going to end up with x. And then to figure out if they're actually inverse, you just do the same thing for this one, and you take g of x and plug in this equation for all of the x's in the problem, and you're going to end up with x. And since they both ended up the same, they are inverses of each other.